Support for today's episode comes from Goalie. You already love them for their ACV gummies, but they just launched a new vitamin gummy, Super Greens. And did you know that Goalie Super Greens gummies contains vitamin A, an essential vitamin that supports a healthy immune system. They're sugar-free, keto-friendly, vegan-friendly. They check all the boxes. And another bonus, they're delicious too. As a Boonie Breakdown listener, you can receive 10% off your next purchase using the code Boonie Breakdown. You can head on over to Goalie.com, use the code Boonie Breakdown for 10% off your next purchase. Forgot all that? You can find it in the show notes and on the BooniBreakdown.com. Hey y'all, it's your girl Boonie and you're listening to the Boonie Breakdown podcast, your source for all things responsible and ratchet. All right, welcome to episode 211 of the Boonie Breakdown podcast. I feel like my Baltimore accent was really thick on that 211, but 211. (laughs) This week, our guest is our homie, our BFF, Shika. She's here. This was a good one, y'all. This was not a planned discussion, but we kind of have a discussion about is romance dead? And who killed it? Y'all might be shocked at what we say. We also talk about how women have kind of conditioned ourselves to accept low-hanging fruit a bit. Ugh, all right? Yeah, don't hate us. But sometimes we got to call, we got to call shit as we see it. We also wrap up talking about therapy. And it's a really good episode. So just, just stick around for that conversation. We're going to hop right into my pick of the week. This week, my pick of the week, this is kind of like an arbitrary one. It's not something that you guys can go buy or check out, but hopefully it serves as a PSA reminder. I want to shout out all the good doctors out there. I tried to make it a point to have all black women as my as any of my doctors it gets hard when you get into some of those specialties but shout out to all the good doctors out there this is the PSA get your physicals get your mammogram get your colonoscopy um get all of that routine preventative testing you need to done if you've not had blood work done go get your blood work done If you have not been to the dentist to get a teeth cleaning, go get your teeth cleaned, especially if your tongue is white and caked up. Oh, no, no, no. If you haven't been to the eye doctor, go get the motherfucking eyes checked. Uh, Make sure you don't need glasses. If you need glasses and you wear them when contacts and all that shit, go ahead and get an updated prescription. You might need that shit happening. If you haven't gone to the gynecologist, go to the gynecologist, get your pap smear. You can advocate, even though they try to push that new rule every such and such year. Nope. Advocate for yourself. If you would like a pap smear um i don't know do doc do boys do y'all go to a doctor to check y'all balls and shit do you need to go to the urologist go to the urologist if you need to go to any the ent go to the ent if you need to go to your allergist go to your motherfucking allergist the point is stay on top of your health we only get one body um to do this thing called life with and so we got to treat them better so this is your reminder to go do all that checkup shit that you've been putting off, you scared to do, go do it, be proactive and hopefully find a good doctor. You don't like what the doctor told you, you know, get a second opinion, but, and you can always advocate for yourself. You are your own best advocate for anything that these doctors tell you. All right. So that is pick of the week. Also slash PSA of the week. <laughs> Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Come back later, please. Housekeeping. Not now. All right. Feedback from episode 210 with our problematic fave. Y'all had a lot to say. It was a lot of commentary, mostly about, oh, my God, Booney, I can't believe you actually showed us screenshots of your DMs. Now, that was kind of tame. But yes, we have transparency here. So we kind of talked about that episode with Brian. It was kind of a DMs expose. Some of your insight into some of the conversations that Brian and I have via direct message on Instagram. (laughs) Um, Also, I got a shout out Patreon group chat because there was a lot of robust discussion around the 14 minute and four second mark. A lot of people, that was a point of contention with y'all with Brian, the 1404 second mark um, in last week's episode. But there was also some commentary around how everyone is seeing some growth in Brian. And I may have to recast Problematic Fave, but I don't think he's going to, 
he's not letting all the problems go. He's still going to be problematic on something. So I think we might be good for a good longer. So if you have not checked out that episode, please go back and listen and do that one. Also now, shout out to y'all responsible fave, KG. He's holding me to the fire that in next week's episode, so next week, on April 25th, I have to drop dates and locations because he's holding me accountable for Booney Live this year. All right. So next week, the suspense is over. I can, I'm shouting out Patreon gang again because y'all can hold a secret well. They know the dates. They know the locations. And I ain't heard no no rumbling. So good job. Good job there. But if you want to be in the no-no and cop your tickets first, you can head on over to patreon.com backslash the boonie breakdown and join our community over there and join our group chat. We have a lot of fun in there, especially during the work week um, when we need to just be a little distracted from what all the bullshit at the nine to five. All right. And also I ask y'all on occasion, I don't beat y'all over the head for it, but you know, those five star reviews over in the Apple podcast app are dope. I just got one from Rocky for real. And then it says it's boonie for me. The boonie. I like it. The boonie, the boonie is able to navigate conversation and ask and answer the questions that the listeners are listening for is the tip top of podcast hosting for me. She brings nothing but absolutely queen energy. And I learn a little something each episode. Thank you, Booney. Keep doing what you do. So thank you so much, Rocky Full Real, for leaving us an amazing five-star re- review. You can do the same if you head on over to the Purple app, if you look on any Apple device. So that's a MacBook, an iPhone, an iPad, your Apple Watch. I don't know, but you can just go on in there Even if you already follow and subscribe the podcast in that app, you just need to search the Boonie Breakdown. And when you select it, you scroll down, you'll see five blank stars if you've not already done it. Fill those stars in, hit five, you're done. If you want to do more, you can add some words. And I would love you long, 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 long time. So again, thanks Rocky for real for that amazing review. If you can follow us on social media, we're on Instagram and Facebook at the Boonie Breakdown. We're even on TikTok the Boonie Breakdown. We're over on Twitter at Boonie Breakdown. You can do that. When you're sharing this episode, you can tag us, put in your Insta story, put in your group chat. You can use the hashtag the Boonie Breakdown, the hashtag pod N P O D I N. All right. So that is it for me. And let's get ready to break it down. Hey, y'all. Hey, it's your girl, Booney. And we got the homie, Sheikah. She always answers the call, y'all. <laughs> y'all, because I be chilling for real. No, I appreciate it. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, I have, I be trying to schedule guests so that it, some stuff is timely based off what's happening because stuff gets stale yeah. so quick. And so the guests who I was supposed to record with this week asked to reschedule. And so I was like, all right. Right, she could, she could to the rescue. <laughs> you gotta roll with the punches because life is really throwing lemons at everybody. And I'm gonna say this too because you would think Mercury was in motherfucking retro gay bitch. Um, I will say this too. Now I'm sitting here googling like when does it? Okay, so May 10th to June 2nd is retrograde. But it's a full moon coming, and it's some shit I've been reading, like how all these planets are like in Pisces. Mm. And there's like this conjunction. You know, they emotional as shit. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's a conjunction that hasn't happened to like since like the 1800s or some shit with Pluto and Jupiter, some wild shit. So there's a lot of feelings. There's a lot of, um, it's a lot of romance and like mm. kind of like. I love, love it. Let's, I could use some romance. Also, plus one as well. It's been a minute since, okay. It's been a minute since I've very had a very romantical evening. I've had good, like, sweat it out, bust it down, just nasty evenings. Mm-hmm. I've had, you know, rub your butt in the middle of the night and we just going to slide up in it evenings, right? Yeah. But a truly romantic evening. Yeah, like, I, I don't, was, I had, I had life. niggas. Give it up on romance. I feel like niggas don't know what romance is. First of all, you know why they don't know what romance is? Because niggas don't even know how to be consistent and niggas don't even know how to plan a date. 
Right. So like consistency is really, oh my God, I almost tweeted this like an hour ago and I said, I put my hands in my pocket because, <laughs> you know, like everybody doesn't need to know my thoughts. Like, and that's a PSA. It'd be hard with social media though. We'll go yeah. But you know, like you kind of pick, well, I think our age group in this generation, like we pick and choose, like some shit flows through my mind and I'm just like, you know what? I can write this shit down. I can like let it go. I can put it in the group chat. I can journal about it, but like social media is not where it belongs or whatever. But I was just thinking, I was like, yo, consistency is like so almost hard to find. And I don't know what it is. Cause here's the thing. I'm to the point in life where I'm not blaming niggas for everything. Yes, y'all are absolutely horrible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like I'm not even, y'all are like. Listen, sometimes the bane of my existence. But, I was going to agree with that point because sometimes it's us. But go uh, ahead. But I'm just like, yo, sometimes consistency is, you know, hard to find. And then I'm like, OK, do, do you practice and hope to lead by example? Like what's going on? Because, again, back to the romantic night thing, it's been a while. I mean, I've had a semi-holy night yeah. um, didn't see coming but like at the same time I'm just like and then now that it's happened I'm just like and what 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 is happening now what is happening now <laughs> I, I, don't know. I do feel like when we're saying this like romance is dead and I do feel like women should be romantical to their men as well I know romantical is not a word but it's a word that I use as a word yeah right and so I feel like romance is a two-way street and I'm just really thinking like it's two ways for me like I'm not receiving romance because the niggas is like Lester but because I don't have anybody who I feel like I want to exert that level of energy on I too am not giving romance. And so it's like, how the fuck do I have a romantical night? Like I want a romantical night. I'm a breakdown. I have this. And I said this in the episode with Brian. It is not that I can't get a man. That is not, that's not what anyone is saying. Most women, I'm going to say, I'm going to say even Sheikha. We could reach out to somebody and entertain who's been in the dms and at the text messages who's just been waiting for a chance one another chance yeah we all have those yeah but i think it's just the people where it's like move move out of my dm make me want to give you the chance to entertain you right like yeah. you go on heart eyes and like all my shit and say this shit and text me when i post something and but it doesn't move beyond that. You don't say, hey, what are you free Saturday evening? I would love to take you out, blah, blah, blah. I would like I to feel, get to know you better. Yeah, like, can we ever. just go get a drink or whatever? Well, I can say that I'm not a girl who has DMs. I'm very inconsistent on social media. <laughs> Anybody DMs me, it is someone who has been in or around my vagina before. Right. So that so that part of it is. Like, what do you want? You know what I mean? So, like, I don't even like that part is dead for me, but I don't understand. And I don't know, like, okay, so I'll say try this. All right. And let's get into a social experience because I have something to say after I tell you try this. Maybe. You try initiating and saying something and just see how they are, because that's a quick way to weed it out is throw the bait. And like, nigga, if you say like, say, for instance, you go. um, So, you know, like, are you single? Would you like to get to know each other better? And whatever the fuck they do with that, she'll let you know where it's at. I know for me right now, I and, you know. I'm going to deal with this at some point, but I am actively avoiding dating. Okay. <laughs> just I don't. honesty and self-awareness matter. Yeah, I know I'm actively avoiding. Like, I know if I told my therapist about my feelings towards, um, because something I realized is that I go a long period of time without physical touch. Like, I don't touch people. Like, I'm home a lot. I don't generally touch people. I'm not a touchy 
feely person, but also if I'm not dating or dealing or having sex or whatever, there's a lack of that that can become something that I notice. And I know she's going to tell me to get on the fucking apps. And I just, you know, I can't. I, know I, can't. I don't want to. I so, can't. And so I'm going to ask this question it. of you. Mm-hmm. Do you, I, I and I'm, I'm talking this out as we're saying this, like, I kind of feel like, and God, I hate to say this out loud. Fuck. I kind of <laughs> agree with the problematic fave, Brian, in the sense. Mm-hmm. I think I can't remember what episode, but one of these episodes, he said, like, women are to blame because of the things we kind of allow. And so, Mm -hmm. so I feel like we've conditioned and moved the date inspection to the low hanging fruit. And so I feel like that's why we feel like romance is gone. Now, some of this stuff is cliche shit you saw on TV, the guy bringing the roses on the first date and shit. And not saying that everyone wants that. But I feel like we've kind of conditioned ourselves to be excited about a return text message. Right. And right. And like small things, And small things that, you know, somebody you're not interested in would do. Right. So. And I understood, I know, I know what you're talking about, what um, Brian said. And I do, and that's the thing, like, I do not hate Brian. I agree with him on a lot of things, um, as he knows this is delivery. But as far as a man mm-hmm. perspective, I know he's not in the minority. In how not in the least. Is. You know, especially with the men, like, we're closer in age to him. The men we come across, like, that is a mindset. And for me, Romance is not necessarily you bringing me flowers on our first date. Do you listen to what I say and then somehow fill in a gap? You know what I'm saying? Like you can express that, oh, you know, today was a rough day, blah, 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 blah. And you might just be like, oh, do you want to have a conversation about it? Let me FaceTime you. Let's talk this through. Like, how are you feeling? Like, that is sweet. Going out, just being, you know, aware and like showing up in a way that shows you pay attention because I'm a thoughtful person. So I yeah. can expect it in, in return, like. I'm not really selfish, you know, I can, I listen to people, I am like an empath, so I can pick up on things and then I know how to show up or I figure out how to show up for you. So hearing you say this, like, you know, it shifted a bit. Mm -hmm. We, We got a little complex beast here, I think, in the sense of we are saying, one, what what romance is is not that cookie cutter picture that we've been fed one yeah two women have cons i'm just gonna be blunt right now women let romance die right when the standards changed right like okay yeah maybe it became corny to do certain things not that it was corny some girls women still love that shit some women may, like you said, listen to me. Are you showing up for me? That kind of shit can be romance. Romance could be, oh, you heard me say I wanted X, Y, Z. And next thing I know, it shows up at my door. Like, yeah. you know, certain things like that. But I'm like, it's sounding like romance is fucking dead because we let that shit die. Like it what? became cooler to, in case in point valentine's day now you got fucking galentine's day and i've never rocked with galentine's day and i know some people may find that like oh my god boonie what i thought that it shit was corny Valentine's day gift this year like i i mean i didn't really participate in valentine's day hugely but yes but I that was the thing because yeah. we moved to this society where everybody gets a fucking participation award so just because you were the lonely bitch sitting at home with no valentine no somebody had to come up with galentine's day that shit is corny right. i don't care what anybody says I will never get on board with that shit because the I people will that I myself run, down on Valentine's Day probably before my thought goes to yeah so send yourself but some I fucking also, flowers I don't know <laughs> last Valentine's Day I was with someone I also bought him a gift and I was very shocked I think we had the conversation around that time that dudes don't expect gifts and I was like well my mama always buy my daddy some shit you know what I'm saying so like that's what my mindset is, is that Valentine's Day is both ways. Like my daddy would get the flowers. He go to Annapolis Seafood, get the big ass, you know, whatever, whatever she wants. Mm-hmm. She buys him something in a card and it's an even exchange. It was never like, 
a one-sided thing. And I always saw it, you know, outside of when you're in elementary school and you fill out the goofy ass cards, but it was always a more romantic thing. But then like what you saying that, because my mind went to, yes, we have allowed the romance to die, but also I feel like, you know, with the break in patriarchy and women being a lot more sexually free. Come on with it a, now. It's a mind fuck. And so it's not just on one party. Like we all have to re- eat, like readjust. Like I can be sexually free and, and be open to casual and this and this and this, but that doesn't mean you get to treat me like a fucking hoe. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like a prostitute. Like it's not the same. So I think we both sides have unlearning and readjusting and relearning to do, but it's wild to see how one kind of falls into the other. You know what I mean? We kind of talked about this in the Patreon gang chat, group chat, shout out to Patreon gang, where I shared this tweet and I just found it because I liked it. And I do agree. It was some interesting dialogue around it in the group chat, but this woman tweeted, um, The women in our generation were lied to. We were told that we had to have money, education, status in order to make ourselves more worthy. And it was all a lie. And now we're lying to ourselves that we're all okay with being alone. I was so fond and popular in my teens and 20s. If someone had guided me early on, there's no telling where I'd be. But I became consumed with being able to do things on my own without a man. That's how not that's not how things work in the real world. We have to stop trying to defy nature. We have to stop waiting for us to have it all together. That time may never come. Now, at some points in that, I don't agree with. But the overall gist, I do think, not just women, I think we were lied to as a generation, right? I think one of the biggest lies we were told is that marriage is this big romantical, it's this huge gesture. Yes, Mm -hmm. it's a major decision, but it's a fucking business decision, right? When you Mm -hmm. look at historically what, what marriages were, it was, you know, either you have rich and wealthy families trying to keep the money in the rich and wealthy elite class, yeah. right? So it's a merger. This family's going to marry this one. Even poor families, there were dowries. Oh, you're going to marry. Hey, you got to pay gonna, the money. Yeah, you're going to take my girl, but I'm going to get six cows and an acre. Right, like. or something, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a very transactional thing. And yeah. somehow we let fucking De Beers come up with engagement rings, which also did not exist before 1980. And say, no, it is love. It's a gesture and all this bullshit. And we really fed into that stuff. And I think that is like we were lied to. I don't think in the way this girl framed it in her tweet. But I do think there were some lies. And I do feel like we're continuing to lie to ourselves. Men, women, whoever, non-binary, whatever you identify as. I think we're all lying to ourselves because I think we've somehow conditioned ourselves to be like, yeah, I want a Netflix and show. That's what I want. But I don't want to sit down and have a, a nice dinner and get to know some right. Yeah. Like we all that shit is the cool mm-hmm. shit and all the stuff you should be doing, air quotes. Right. Like corny shit. And so it's very interesting to watch where we are because in my mind, I can name a dozen women who I think are fucking fantabulous, amazing, beautiful freaky ass nasty ass women <laughs> on all the shit educated yeah. fun got money yeah. suck your dick off the bone single as fuck Hello. like single as fuck yes yeah and it's you know and again to another conversation that i have been seeing fl- floating around is you know the willingness to settle and that's the thing When I say that I know that I'm actively avoiding it's because I do not have the bandwidth right now to deal with anybody else's bullshit. I'm dealing with my own. You know what I'm saying? So there's a there's a I have a threshold right now that I and when you honestly, when you're going out to date, like you have to have a more hopeful mindset. You have to have a more positive mindset. You have to be ready to deal with bullshit and let me go. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and you know, there's a lot of things you have to deal with. And 
I just don't feel like it right now. And I don't think that's going to last forever. But I'm also super like cognizant of that. And I'm not placing that blame on anybody else because I have tried and I have done it. And it's a lot. And it's taken. Have I gone on nice dates and had fun? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it did not. They, I did not find my person per se, but at this and and also it was taxing. It was a lot. It's a lot of energy. Like we're de- we're still dealing with a fucking pandemic. The f- mm. I want to get the fuck out of here. Except the fucking flight prices are so You gotta give a fucking are. pint of blood like, or some shit. Right, like, it's, like, it's just like there's so many other things to deal with that. Like right now, single dumb is not the worst for me yeah you know, you know i never feel bad being alone it'd be times where it's like i wish i had a partner to do things but i enjoy my company i do think you said something there that i like you really have to be in the spirit of receiving company and receiving someone to show up in your space when you're dating healthily yeah. i think it's great for you to say no i just can't right now right because i wish some a lot of people would say that, like, no, maybe I should not be entertaining people that's and exchanging one thing energies. What you niggas do, y'all don't be in this space, but y'all would definitely be out here and being hella self unaware. Listen, let me tell you something. One <laughs> of my friends, one of my friends, I give her such major props, but is she younger than us though? But like, not a lot younger. Like she's in her early thirties. And so for me, it's very amazing to watch her because she is a dater. Mm -hmm. She thinks dating is a sport. I've like, I have not seen someone date like this in a long time. And I just don't have that energy to always constantly like, I just can't do it. And so I, um, I'm in awe. I commend her. And so she's it was on a date and entertaining someone and the guy is texting her and, you know, when did this fucking become a date? Like, oh, I'm gonna pull up at your house. I can come to your house. No, you can't. I don't know you, my nigga. Like, I'm a single woman. You just can't come to my house. No. And so she tells him no. And he says some comments like, well, then send me some pictures or something. And she's like, no, like, My nudes cost money. Like, no, you need to invest in me and we'll get to that point. And he was like, money? She's like, yeah. He's like, girls always want money. He was like, no, it's time. Time is an investment as well. We could have a good time and you don't have to spend any money. We could go here and, you know, the quintessential Brian Snowball date and all that shit. Like, that's spending time, right? You don't have to spend a lot of money to get to know someone. And so he was like, oh, okay. He was like, well, I can already tell I should probably just walk away from you because you're I'm going to get annoyed because I'm going to have to put in too much work to get the pussy. It's literally what he said. And so I'm, I'm laughing. I'm like, well, way to know yourself, sir. And to walk away. But also, what the fuck? My nigga? I'm mean, like, what the fuck? Like, and again, that shirt, that's his mindset in going into it. You, sir, don't want to date. You would like pussy. Yeah, you just find pussy. some pussy or find some easy pussy, which I assume this is what he's trying to do. But it's under the guise of dating. You can put in your profile casual hookup, sex, whatever the fuck the people use. Only it's the disguise of it. So, like, yes, kudos to being self aware, but also fuck you for not presenting yourself that way because, like. It's not, you don't like, it's isn't that crazy? I was like, surprised of you getting pics because I said, no, you can't come to my house. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, that's wild to me. I was stunned. I literally was like, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, my goodness. It's like, I remember when I was on a good, th- you know, run of actually dating, dating. And it was like, I would tell a nigga, like, oh, you know, I just don't think we're like, compatible like da, 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 da. nigga cussing me out i'm just like okay block and move on <laughs> it's like Nick, listen man i'm not finna argue with you <laughs> about how i feel about you like i like you don't like it that's fine but at the end of the day i do not have to deal with you if i don't want to and you sir should be able to accept that just like if a motherfucker told me like you know what i really don't think this is work cool it it's it's, and blessings unto you listen it's just so stunning like 
how some men are really only interested in low hanging fruit who will give them pussy. Yeah. And like what you just said, just say that then. Like yeah. just man up and say it. Don't present to me under the guise of this when you really only want it pussy. Yeah. It, it, it's it's really astonishing. I don't know. I just I'm I'm very curious even for myself because I am not. I can't say that I'm actively dating. I, right. yang, 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 round. <laughs> like, <laughs> texting some people or whatever. Yeah, like I. So I do need to decide. Like, am I in it? In it? Because that is my thing too. Like, I can call myself on my bullshit. I sometimes often, sometimes often, <laughs> I sometimes <laughs> often <laughs> will pick the person for the right now. Mm-hmm. Right. So like I will pick the person that I know doesn't have the longevity mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it's easier for me. Right. Like it's less scary. Right. And so um, I'm going to work on that in therapy. But also- much like how I often pick emotionally unavailable people because it gives, because I don't have to be vulnerable also as well. I discovered that like, that was my twenties. Honestly, I, I discovered, I discovered that in, in therapy in my thirties, but I was just like, mm, yeah, that makes total sense. Like yeah, why that was what I was going for. That's what I was attracting. Um, you know, Cause it's not like I go in knowing, and that's the shit that I think people kind of have to realize is that this shit is, yes, it's your actions, it's your words, but a lot of shit of what we do and how we come across is so subconscious that you don't mm-hmm. know. You don't fucking know. I was not going out here like, oh, where are all the evo- emotionally unavailable niggas? I was not. That was, <laughs> no, I was dead ass confused. Where they yeah, yeah, where they at? You know, I did not, you know, it's not, it's not as conscious as we might, might think it is. Yeah. So, you know, you got to really, you got to be ready. And you definitely you do. And it's funny because I do think, now, let me make this very clear. Now, the little the little thought ratchet bucket is still in me. Now, let me just say that. Because sometimes when you just meet a man, sometimes it's like, oh, he got that throw down. I know this nigga not shit, but I'm going to let him hit. Um, <laughs> that is why. That's a part of who I am. Yeah, so that him. might happen every yeah. now and then. That may happen. But I do need to, because I do the same thing. I think um picking men who are not emotionally available um it seems to be a trend too and i seem to really um and i think it's kind of a mirror situation for me where for a little bit i was still attracting people who had um abandonment issues because i did oh also same plus one yeah so i was constantly like it was a mirror we were magnets like oh you do too all right <laughs> you do too yay yeah, um, and, then, and then you end up triggering each, each other yeah that's what happens yeah so it's <laughs> very, a very trauma bond it's very interesting yeah. when, when people you know <laughs> if she listens to this episode she'll be like bitch pay me because this same friend that i mentioned earlier we were having a conversation and i was like pink this for Sheikah, totally forgot about it and mm-hmm. I was sitting on the couch like, damn, what did I say the other day to me and she could talk about? But I forgot. And now we did had this whole thing and it done came to me. We were oh. talking about therapy and how you were just, we were just both talking about therapy. And she had said, wouldn't it be great if you could send anonymous tips to people's therapists, right? Like it was a public database and you could just put in like, no, nah, this motherfucker playing. And you send your side of the story to the therapist like i don't know what he's telling you sis well i don't know what she's telling you but the bitch is a liar because i do look at some people like you can tell hey, hey, no like you, you are lying, lying to me or you are lying to your therapist because it is Absolutely. no way i honestly feel like i get a i get a like if somebody tell me they have a therapist and like they're discussing something with me like maybe a life event and i'm just like did you say that to your therapist or you should take that to your therapist and depending <laughs> on like whatever response I'm like and you probably lied <laughs> you know what I mean because they 
again, you have to be willing. Like I've said some things to my therapist and she's laughed because it. I know it sounded absolutely outrageous once it came mm. out of my mouth. But it's like, also, I'm not, this is not the place for me to have a mask on. This is the place for me to show who I really am, what I really fucking feel. And we analyze that because you're going in lying. You're not going to get the help you fucking need. And I feel like a lot of people go and fucking lie to their therapist or they present to their therapist, you know, this sugar-coated reality and they just out here being a demon to other people around them. I really, I really just want to be looking at some people like, it is no way you're in therapy or you are fucking lying to your therapist because it is no way. It is no way. Yeah, I feel like you feel like half as stories or like you know and it's again you have to give your perspective but there's your perspectives and there there are the facts Mm -hmm. what did you do because i i know a lot of my time in therapy is getting to the self-realization of like oh okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) all right i see i see me i see me (laughs) you know and i appreciate my therapist because she call a bitch out exactly she told me uh, okay Mm -hmm. she will let me know so greatly appreciate having a good therapy but i was like that would be bomb as fuck if you could literally send an anonymous tip to somebody's therapist (laughs) therapy was like free for everybody because we everybody needs it like we are all out here struggling with like life's whatever and we all need it it you know our traumas and i'm sure i got this from some therapists but our traumas and a lot of shit comes out in our relationships with other people like Mm -hmm. that you see where you're fucked up or not yeah and it's like i watch all the fucking relationships whatever whatever shows because i am a big fan of learning from somebody else's mistakes and not mine. Okay. Like I'm a big fan of <laughs> myself through unnecessary bullshit, like big fan. So I watch it and like, yes, it's entertaining and it's drama and it's this, this and that, but there's also things that you pull out of it and like, you can see yourself or you can see, Ooh, that's some shit. Well, I do, And that shit ain't cute. Well, it's so funny you say that because I'm like, Hmm. Hmm. I don't watch much like reality TV anymore. Like not like I used to. I used to love all that VH1 shit and that yeah. Bravo shit. I don't yeah, watch like, it the I same as I used do, to. Yeah, I don't do like the love and hip hops and stuff like that. But like a love and marriage, maybe Huntsville. I watch um, something like a put a ring on it when there's a therapist in the space that also okay gives the feedback because I be look. I'm like yo this shit is bugged out but it's also like gems that I take from it um you know even something as goofy as like love is blind like you watch that shit and you're just like you know it's funny because I didn't even finish the first season I got to the point where I think they had met in person first the second season was definitely like messier First season okay. was a little bit more like, oh, this is a fresh experience. It, it's working for some people and not. The second season was bananas. But also, like, you might see somebody you dealt with or somebody you talked to. or this mm. like, You see different things. You might see yourself. And then you can kind of, like, pull back and take some of the criticism that comes with whatever behavior. Oh, married at first sight. Because that is a Oh my, my look, mama ratchet me all in that. It's, um a wild concept to me, but also watching people navigate through it, it's just like holy shit, this is so for me, yeah, like I do think it's interesting sometimes when you're in therapy or you're even watching a situation or you see your friend comes to you and they're sharing something, you're like, Oh, I, I had that before. Yeah. But when they're explaining the situation, you get to see yours in a different light. Like mm-hmm. you get to even see like, dang, I could have done this different. Or I should have yeah. done this different. Right. Yeah. Cause you really dig your heels into your whole thing. So yeah, I just don't know. I really still in hoping, wishing, praying that 
there will be a good man will cross paths in my life Mm -hmm. who is I won't say um whole because I don't think all of us are whole but actively working towards a healing (laughs) I feel like healing is ongoing because you it is tomorrow will bring that will it is one thing can knock you off or yeah you don't know what tomorrow or the future brings that may knock you off so that I've let go of the concept of us like you are whole as you are but like you know working on the things that you know aren't great for you in your life or yeah. don't work for you or your habits that aren't you know like we everybody has that shit and then i want that good man that's working towards mental wellness and healing to be attached to good dick <laughs> i'm not compromised like i cannot no. compromise on that yeah. i have been yeah. there before yeah. i have tried to do that before and yeah you no not I doing it i recommend because at some ghetto point, the contempt builds and then everything you hate like yeah i'm gonna fucking resent you oh here this nigga go put his shoes here fuck that nigga or some argument you know what i mean like everything becomes annoying and i think you know sex is so important i don't care what anybody says like that shit is important it's you know how you show intimacy and love a lot of people so it's like yeah it's top three for me i'm gonna be very honest i feel like a lot of people aren't honest about that like, it's top three. You now half the time, if the sex is whack, I'm not. I'm gonna. Yeah, I can't do up. it. I ch- I tried. I really tried. I tried. Can't do it. Won't do it. <laughs> Shan't really do it again. I really did try. So, um, I was proud of you, but I'm tired of it. Like that. No, because then that's gonna send out a negative message. Excuse me. That was probably the we about to talk. But I was like, fine, <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? But like. You know, but essentially, yeah, for your preference, like, no, I'm not. Mm-mm. But essentially, yeah, fuck him. Um, but not literally. But I, you know. I immediately stopped like him, and I was like, wow, you're that bitch. I didn't even know it was the first time it ever happened to me. I was like, oh, I, I don't like him. <laughs> and I was like, okay, now you know who you are. <laughs> like, yeah. you know. About you this is not a go you cannot it's not it is not in the least 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 bit Mm -hmm. um damn time be flying yo i wanted to ask you Mm -hmm. because i don't i don't know how you feel i don't think we ever talked about them are you Mm -hmm. before we and this is before we wrap up are you Uh going to watch the kardashians new show like were you uh, keeping up with the kardashians fan Okay, it's so funny because my friend, she was like, I've been watching it on Hulu. She was like, it's just something past time. And I was like, you know, when it first came out, I think I I watched the Kardashians up to a certain point in time. I think like Mm -hmm. by the time Kim got with Kanye, I had stopped. Um, But I did watch when she was with that uh, basketball player guy. Oh, Um, yeah. Humphreys. Yeah. Humphreys. Um. I was this week years old when it clicked and I realized that they were rebooting on Hulu. I just realized that like a couple of days ago, I promise you. Oh, I yeah, they, like, oh, they, shit, because I, I remember the the whole big last season. Yeah, thing, Chris Jenner did. played that shit like a fiddle. Like, oh, I they saw did somebody this, did that and I was yeah, like. they played, oh, they did the big goodbye on E. I didn't watch it, but I saw all the. Yeah. You know, pomp and circumstances. all the press. Yeah, I'm all the press that. around it. And then it was like two days after that, it was like the Kardashians on Hulu. I said, ain't that about it? You know what? Because when I first saw the A, because I do watch things on Hulu, I assumed that they were putting the previous. The old shows. Mm -hmm. It Like literally a couple of days ago. And I was like, oh shit. And that funniest shit, before we got on here, I just saw a clip on Twitter where Saint found something on Roblox. It was like, it's something, a video or something on Roblox, but it appeared to be images from her first sex tape, like the sex oh, tape. Oh, shit. Now I'm about to go log right on to Hulu and watch but it. No, I want to watch it. I hate that. 
because I saw that clip and I was like, and you Sage know. just kind of like, give me, like, I just want to see the iPad. He cracking up. And she's like, Chloe, come look at this because I think you're the only one who understand it. And they're all looking like shocked and scared and shit. And I'm just like, Yo, I want to nope. watch. Nope. I'm logging on to Hulu yeah. and watching it now. It's so crazy okay. because... I'm not a Kardashian hater. Mm -hmm. I do understand the arguments against, you know, the appropriation and shit like that. The one thing that I do kind of cringe at about them is that these women, majority of them, not all of them, are raising black children. Um, I do cringe about that. Like, especially like true. True is significantly darker than Chloe, you know, like. Um, so yeah i just feel like but all that to say saint and that motherfucking chicago are my favorites <laughs> I, them. I see you tweet about them often like yeah no. <laughs> i was so tickled because saint was just like really laughing and joking and shit and she's looking at she's like wait wait a minute and she tried to she grabs the ipad from her and she's like what is this and it's some shit on roblox and i'm like Oh, I kind of want to see how this. Yeah, goes. no, I'm totally watching it now because I definitely was on Hulu last night watching my SEU in Law mm-hmm. and Order, um, organized crime, and I saw the little thing pop up, and I was like, "Damn it, the Kardashians!" But you know, they took not having no talent and ran with that shit, boy. You no, know, it was entertaining. It just got to a point, I think, and this happens with me in a lot of things, and that's just my like my personality but it had got to the point where it was like the show and as much news coverage as I was seeing on that like being active on Twitter whatever it got to the point where I just didn't care anymore like I was like okay I don't give a fuck like I want yeah and so it got annoying at some point but I never like 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 I was following Chloe for a long time actually I was following Chloe probably until um she played in Jordan Woods phase mm. with her. Teammate. Yeah, the only one I was following because you do see them so much was Courtney. But mm. I pretty much unfollowed all of them because it's like, yeah, I'm gonna see it. Like I don't follow Beyonce because everyone shares all her shit too. So um I do. But yeah, like the Kardashians, it's just like, hmm. but yeah. they are good background TV. Like I never sat down like Oh, the Kardashians have a new season. Yeah, like grab popcorn or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is like, oh, it's on E. It's kind of like. That's what I would do too. Yeah. If it's on E, when it was on E and I had cable, I would be like, oh, that's the one. Let me do this while I sit here and send out some emails. Yeah. Or I might take a nap on it, wake up. Yeah. But it's not much watch TV. Yeah. 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 I might have to see. I might give it the one episode because I was just really like. I just need to see this. This whole of. Yeah, I gotta see that. And if the children are in it or are Saint, oh right? no, yeah, no, it's the whole family is like in the kitchen, and Saint comes <laughs> running in, like, look, and she's like, oh, let me see, baby. Yeah, no, it's a yeah. Okay, you I'll will watch love it. it. You will I'll love watch it. it. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll let you guys know how it is. <laughs> so, all right, she could girl. All right, thanks for having me. This was fun. Look, and with no agenda planned at all. <laughs> went out and went with it that's what we always do bye girl bye all right that is it for this week's episode i want to thank the homie shika as always for being a doll and being up to an amazing conversation with me even when she was tired and really didn't feel like it I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. All right. Also, be sure to support our sponsor, Goalie Super Green Gummies. You can use the code Booney Breakdown to save an additional 10% off your purchase. So go ahead and head on over to Goalie.com. Details can be found in the show notes and in the BooneyBreakdown.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, okay, I hope you did. I hope you hope you did. And if you enjoyed it, I encourage you to listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube, or any apps that you listen to your favorites on don't forget to leave us five star reviews you might just hear your review on the next episode follow us on all social media share the episode with those you love those you don't love those you fucking hate i don't make these pretty images for nothing okay have a dope ass week stay healthy safe and sane thank you for listening and remember the ratchet in me always honors the ratchet in you home i stay until next time okay.